Now that we've cut our bevel edge on our self-framing picture, we're going to pop the middle out and put the frame on the side and we're going to cut the design out. Now I did this design as a negative design, meaning that we're going to make a picture by removing material instead of leaving material there for you. So there's tricky cuts in here like these big swirls and they're really not so bad. They're almost the same as the swirls on the outside of the frame except they're a little bit more fragile. But since we're removing material and it's leaving quite a bit, they shouldn't be too bad to cut. But we're going to go at it in the same way. We're going to cut the inside edge first of the swirl and then we'll come back and do the outside and clear the material from that. Now even though these lines are connected, the little pods or whatever, the little um, buds from the stem, I still drilled holes here because I think sometimes it's easier to, to come in and do this area and come into the open area rather than going out and then going around and clearing the bud area. So I'll show you how to do that too. The rest are all just a series of curves that were kind of cut similar to the big curves and the leaves are pretty easy too so this design shouldn't be too much trouble for you. Let's get to it. Okay we're ready to go and I've got a size 2 0 2 out blade in my saw. I use a reverse tooth blade and I like Olsen blades and I'm going to start out by this small curve if I can find the right hole. I already sanded the back to the little holes so they don't catch on the table. That's kind of important to do. So I'm going to thread my blade in and I'm going to start cutting on the inside edge. Now since I use the two up blade, it's going to go slow. I'm not going to try to push too fast or I'll break the blade. But I want it to be able to get in these tight corners and have a lot of control. You could probably use a bigger blade if you needed to, but I prefer to go slower and use a smaller blade. I'm going to follow the inside curve all the way up to the point and then I'm going to stop and back it out and to back out I'm pivoting on this finger I'm going to go back to the hole and then I'm going to come back in on the outer edge and follow along again All the time this finger is holding down and this, this hand is pushing. I'm going in a clockwise direction. And when I get up to the end, I'm just going to go really slow. You can see where it just came off. And I'm going to try to back out. It's going to pop out. There's the little curl. See, maple's quite... Maple's quite strong, it's stronger than you would imagine. Now we don't have to take the blade out. Next thing I'm going to do is finish this off. And by, I'm, by that I'm going to dive in and I'm going to lean a little bit toward the left because I'm going to start on the right wall. I'm not going to worry about the pads right now. Same thing, we're going to back 
up. Now this time I'm going to push to the right because I'm starting on the left wall. Just going to lean that blade and once I'm in, when you need to be patient when you're doing long straight lines like this, straighter. Because if you push too hard, you're going to break your blade. You just need to relax, put on some good music. And meet up with the other line. Okay. Next thing we'll do is We'll go to one of the pods. I call them pods. We thread our blade. This time I'm going to take a little material up, go to the one side, stop at the line, come back, and then it'll get rid of the center. And we're going to continue to do that. And I wanted to show you where I drilled. I drilled right at the rounded top edge of the little pad. Because then that curve is already there. I don't have to have an entry spot. It's just easier with small stuff like that. I finished drilling the other, or scrolling the other two little pods, and I'm going to do part of the butterfly now. Same principle, you want to drill your holes at a wider part. Like that's a small piece, but I tried to get the widest part of it. And we're going to do one side at a time the same way. This is essentially the same type of cut as the big curve. They're all curves. We're going to cut the inside of the curve edge first, and then we'll do the outside second. It's just kind of good practice to do. Though on something, you know, like what the, the section I'm doing now, it probably wouldn't matter, but it's just good practice to get into. Remember when you're getting close to the edge, you don't want it to jump and, and dig your, your scroll line further, so you back off on the pressure and just let the blade finish up and finish doing the work for you. The lines here are very close, so you want to be sure not to push too hard to go through. You 
remember as you get to the end of your cut to back off your pressure and let the blade just come perpendicular. You saw it jump, that's when it met the other line. So if you push too hard, you're going to cut right through. And even though this is connected here, these pieces will stay on. You really don't want it to mess up your design like that. I went ahead and finished up the wing sections because it's the same procedure. And now we're going to do the body the same way as we did the, the larger leaf here. And I'm going to do the body first and then do the antenna and bring them in to the body section. Now this, it really doesn't matter which side you go into. So, since the hole is closer to his bottom, I'm going to do his bottom first. Up to his tail. Line, just so you come back on gradually, it shouldn't really matter that much. Here's his body section. And we're going to scroll his antenna. Just a little cut there. Again, I drilled it on the back rounded edge to start. Back around to the line. And then come in from the other side. Very little pressure. You're letting the blade work for you. You don't want to push hard. There you go. From the back, you can see he looks good. And now the final thing I want to show you how to do is the leaf here. It's really the same thing as any inside cut, but instead of drilling in the middle or close to the stem, I decided to drill to a wider angle here because I'm going to come in from one side and then go back around, come back, you'll see. We're going to do this like any corner. So you take out a little triangle. Now I have a choice of coming around that way or that way. I'm going to choose a straighter edge because I'm going to have to back the blade up. So I want to back up the path with the least amount of curves. It just makes it easier. So I'll start following on the left here. Again, you have to be patient and go slowly. Because I am going to a maple, and it's hard. So now I want to just pull the blade to that back. And then I'll take the cut from the other side.
and you continue doing your other leaves like that. So you should be able to finish that on your own. Practice, practice. Make a couple copies of just the center of the pattern if you want and practice on that too. Have fun.